So, in Mike's Mix, Far North uh, Spirits was one of the first distilleries to open in Minnesota after the passage of the Surly Bill way back when. Right, so now, after three years in the business, they're sort of looking to change the way the world sees Minnesota agriculture in distilling, and maybe even change some of our minds as well. Today in Mike's Mix, the owner of Far North Spirits explains the process from grain to glass. Wild ride. We started with a field on my family farm. We had a field of rye that looked great, and we just made sure that we had a building to distill it in at, at some point. If that plan sounds a little backwards to you, you're not alone. Even founder Mike Swanson wouldn't recommend it. Looking back, probably not. Okay. <laughs> Still, that maverick spirit flows through all that Mike and his wife Sherry do. They left behind the corporate world to open the northernmost distillery in the lower 48 and chose to grow their grain in the harsh climate of Halleck. The Red River Valley actually has some of the richest topsoil in the world. That gamble paid off, and now Mike is plowing ahead to change what farmers think of Minnesota rye. It was a, a crop that was uh, tough to market as a commodity, but when you take the grain and turn it into whiskey, now you've got something marketable. With grant money from the Department of Agriculture, Mike is growing and distilling several rye varieties to compare how they grow, their maltiness, and flavor. You're going to put the effort in to figure out all these characteristics and yeah. then give away all that information? <laughs> yeah. Again, is that it the best Sounds ridiculous. <laughs> Probably not in the short term. Right now, Kentucky really owns bourbon. I mean, Scotland owns scotch. But rye is kind of up in the air right now. At the outset, Far North distilled just their Solvay gin from Minnesota rye. Now they offer five spirits, including the award-winning Gustav Navy Strength Gin, which you'll find in high-end New York restaurants just as often as you'll see it around here, a spiced rum that's one of my personal favorites, and their new Rocknar rye. This batch was aged in barrel mill barrels, 15 gallon, for a year, and then we finish it in a combination of Oloroso sherry and cognac casks. It's a spirit you'll find in bars around the Twin Cities, including at Punch Bowl Social in St. Louis Park. So today we're going to be doing the Orchard and Oak, uh, which is one of my, our most popular cocktails at Punch Bowl. We do a really nice house-made pear syrup, mm. some fresh squeezed lime juice, a little bit of Angus sour bitters, and sociable cider works. Uh, oh, wow. So we have a little bit of a cider whiskey cocktail going on here. Those ingredients meet three dashes of Angus sour bitters and, of course, the rye. After a long shake over ice to chill, dilute, and combine. Stringing that off into the glass, oh, wow. and then we're going to be adding some of the cider to this. It's Freewheeler Dry Apple from Sociable Cider Works. One of the few ciders that I've come across that is hot. Garnished with fresh sage leaves, this cocktail is a taste and a whiff of spring that's way ahead of the calendar. The, the hoppier, drier cider really stands up to the, to the rye. It definitely it highlights through. and yeah. showcases it. And it's not overly sweet. Pretty packaging, too. Yeah. Uh, Minnesota made from top to bottom, from the rye to the barrels that it's aged in. If you want the recipe for Orchard and Oak, it's posted at WCCO.com slash Mike's Mix. And by the way, uh, Mike, Far North's owner, says if you're a Minnesota farmer looking to grow rye, he can help connect you with a distiller looking to buy it. He's got a guy? He's, he knows a guy. All right. You can reach him through our website as well.